Hey, everyone. So first and foremost, thank you for that introduction. It's great to be here. Um, as mentioned, so I've been in the supply chain space for, um, I guess, the entirety of my career. So my first company that I founded in college was actually uh, a company in the apparel space to, to seek inventory visibility for those companies. And I was so frustrated at that time that I couldn't integrate all these ERP systems. So I ended up building some of the first APIs for fashion companies because they were like, what is this thing? And, and from, that time, from that time on, you know, I, I was continuously frustrated with this lack of trust, lack of uh, access to data, lack of interoperability um, in these systems. And so co-founded the company Chronicled in 2014. We were one of the earliest companies to register non-financial assets in a blockchain. So looking at before even supply chain, just how do I represent this, this object, device, or sensor on a blockchain? Um, we've since moved on to, to power uh, blockchain-based supply chain networks in the pharmaceuticals in industries the uh, precious metals and minerals industry um, in automotive and, and other enterprise industries. So I'm here today uh, to share with you my passion for blockchain. Um, it's a technology that I believe, while early on, will change the world in not just our technological processes, but also our, our social processes and paradigms. So being so close to Halloween, um, I thought I'd start with a little short story of when I moved to San Francisco. And like any good story, this is based on a true story. Um, so when I moved to San Francisco, I was when we co-founded Chronicled, I was still living um, in Park City, Utah, actually. And after a few months of, of working on Chronicled and realized, OK, that, you know, let's relocate to San Francisco, um, we were already way underway and just building, building, building. And I didn't have time to even pick my apartment. You know, the housing market in San Francisco is bad now. It was just as bad then. Um, so I moved to the apartment and signed a lease from afar. And it was one of these new, just high rise with all of the amenities, um, particularly NFC key card access to not only the building, but also my apartment um, itself. And so needless to say, because I moved and like got straight into working, uh, the packing, unpacking of everything was very low on my list of things to do. Um, around that time, my grandparents had passed away and left some jewelry and, and other uh, high value belongings and sentimental things to me. And I hadn't unpacked them. I didn't even have a safe yet. And so. One day, I get a knock on the door, and it's a police officer saying, are you missing anything? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I just have boxes everywhere. So I, I go to look through the boxes. And of course, I'm missing all of this jewelry. I'm missing my passport. I'm missing my checkbooks, my credit cards, and, and a whole bunch of other things. And so I didn't even know what was missing. Um, the craziest thing that happened to me at that, that moment was that I realized I couldn't even access the access control records to my own apartment. I needed to get a warrant to look at that data. I also needed to spend a lot of time working with building management, with the insurance companies, and with you know, law enforcement to prove that these items, and with you know, insurance, that these were actually my own items. And I didn't have a great... Um, connected record of them because they had been inherited recently and, and not much documentation. So I think for me, that was the moment early on. You know, I was building this company, this theoretical company, right? Of like, here's this blockchain, this cool new technology where we can use it for things. And it didn't hit me. And I'm happy that this happened early on because it really opened my eyes to the applications of the technology that had I had you know, more control over access to my apartment. Because it turned out it was a maintenance employee who copied the records for the access cards and actually entered 15 other apartments and, and robbed them. So I realized at the time, if I had control over my data um, and the history of my belongings, this, this experience that was already super emotional and super taxing um, would not have been nearly as you know, challenging and bad. And so getting into this, the world we live in today, um, how we work, how we interact, how we do business, um, 
with government systems, with each other, it's largely disempowering. What do I mean by that? So we lack access to our data. Um, we lack knowledge about the products that we consume or use. Um, we lack control over a lot of the things that we do. And overall, we lack trust. And so today, I wanted to share with you why I think blockchain is largely an empowering technology, um, something that will be the backbone of many processes and industries and, and connected technologies. Um, in order to do that, we'll start very simply with what are the uh, problems of today and then go into how can blockchain change the world and, and is already changing the world in, in many industries and why, most importantly, should I care now and, and hopefully should you care now. So first and foremost, the, the title of my talk is Blockchain, the Operating System for the Future. So what do I mean by operating system for the future, Oper operating system for today or the past? Am I talking about a, a technology, an operating system, Linux, uh, Windows, Mac OS? Um, not exactly. So what is an OS? I, I think everyone in this room knows for computing what an operating system is. But you know, specifically designed as a system software that manages the computer hardware and directs the processing of programs. So on this graph or graphic, you can see essentially it acts as a bridge between the hardware and application layer. And the stronger or more robust the operating system, um, the more possibilities for the ap application layer. So this is also an area where a lot of decisions are made. This is you know, depending on if it's vertically integrated or you, you grant access to data or limit access to data. So it's, it's an area or a topic I like to think a lot about and beyond just technology. So beyond tech, if we, if we make this abstract a little bit, the idea of an operating system is that it's a bridge between resources and uses or a model for exchanging one thing for another. Um, I think of it in, in, in terms of our social compacts or our social protocols, like how we interact with each other, first and foremost. Um, so in order to understand what our social you know, behaviors and operating system are, let's look at the world, how, how we behave before the internet, before globalization. So the operating system of the past, we had trust in our local communities. It was point-to-point -point interactions. If I was a farmer and I'd go to the local cobbler because my shoe has a hole in it, I know who the cobbler is. And that cobbler knows that if I don't have money right away, I can make a promise that when my crop yields something, I'll pay him back. And, and we, you know, again, the communication and trust at that time was then localized. Um, the problem then, though, during this time when we had localized communication and localized community and localized trust is that it was incredibly inef 